Well, we're going to go back to our top story now uh, for Media Watch. Emma James is here. She's been getting some reaction uh, to the news here in France that a, a police commander was murdered last night uh, by a jihadist, uh, saying that he uh, carried out the killing uh, in, uh, in, in direct response to an order from the Islamic State group. You've been looking at uh, the responses online. What have you got for us? Yes, absolutely. There does seem to be disbelief, really, that um, we've had two terror attacks in the space of two days. And, of course, once again, France has been targeted. Um, in fact, as that latest attack was taking place uh, just 50 kilometres away in Paris, this was the scene as they lit up uh, the Eiffel Tower to mark solidarity with the people of Orlando following the nightclub shooting with the hashtag Love Wins projected onto the tower. Um, the images of the two victims have now been released, Jean-Baptiste uh, Salvin and Jessica Schneider, um, and their murders leave behind a three-year-old orphan. And this cartoon is very stark and really quite distressing. Um, the three-year-old boy wearing the bloodied hat of his, uh, his father, who was a police commander. Um, now, this particular case is marked out um, because of its use of social media, um, rather chillingly so because the murderer decided to use a relatively new thing called Facebook Live mm -hmm. in order to actually be able to speak to people directly. He was broadcasting for some 13 minutes last night. Um, and in during that time, he said he was answering ISIS's call um, for there to be attacks across the world during the period of Ramadan. Um, and he also said that Euro 2016 would become a graveyard. Now, obviously, his Facebook page has been taken down now. And, and so you could see the three-year-old child in the video. You could. Uh, David Thompson a French journalist who specialises in, in jihadist movements um, was actually tweeting the content of that video, not live, he wasn't watching it real time. He saw it shortly afterwards when it was republished by ISIS's PR arm, um, if you like, for want of a better term. Um, and he refers to the child being behind the killer, uh, La Rossi Abala, on the sofa. Um, and having killed his parents, the man then says, I don't, I still don't know what to do with him. Uh, Absolutely just chilling. Unbelievably yeah. chilling. Um, it really is shocking. Um, now, of course, a lot of people are asking questions about how can Facebook actually prevent things like this happening in the future. Um, Wired magazine actually predicted that there could be problems with Facebook Live. Back in April, um, they wrote this article with the headline, Facebook's plan to stop people from live streaming sex. Now, of course, now that seems like the least of their concerns. Um, Facebook has said in the past that it is up to users to report unsavory or criminal material, and they frankly don't actually yet have an answer for how they can police the content of these things just yet. Uh, if we take a look at this article from Lobs, they say that um, an attack live on Facebook was just a question of time, and they also point to the fact that uh, La Rossi uh, Abala actually had a very... Um, big, large presence on social media. Um, he actually worked under the pseudonym Dr. Food because he was unbelievably actually delivering um, late-night takeaways to people in the area where he lived. Wow. That was his little business that he'd set up. Mm. And he posted lots of videos under the name of Dr. Food. Um, nothing too sinister in there, uh, although he does talk about having an evening rant about unpleasant people and said, a little smile can't hurt. Wow, okay, amazing. Uh, let's cross over to the US because people there are really looking for answers um, just three days after the mass shooting at the uh, gay nightclub in Orlando. Yes, uh, a very different potential uh, motive emerging in Florida right now. Um, lots of articles surfacing, uh, quoting different people who used to frequent the Pulse nightclub in Florida. Um, and it appears that possibly, rather than being a radical Islamist, he was actually struggling with his own sexuality. Omar Mateen... Could he not have been both? Quite possibly. <laughs> um, but clearly there was, there was some degree of conflict going on there because the Orlando Sentinel, obviously a, a local um, publication, on their website says that at least four regulars have said they'd seen him there before. Ty Smith is quoted in this article. Sometimes he would go over in the corner and sit and drink by himself. Other times he would get so drunk he was loud and belligerent. He says he saw them around, 
around a dozen times in that nightclub. Um, the LA Times reporting on this one too, saying that Kevin West uh, reportedly had messaged Omar Mateen uh, on and off for a year using a gay chat and dating app, um, but he'd never actually seen him in the flesh until that night. About an hour before the shooting, he dropped a friend off at the Pulse nightclub and recognised Omar Mateen, but all they said was hello and that was it. OK, and uh, some news just in on that, actually. Officials say they could go after uh, the wife of uh, Omar Mateen, the saying that she knew uh, that he was planning an attack and didn't do uh, enough to stop him. But uh, we've run out of time, and we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you very much indeed.